fa 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 Onion Games in the last couple of years have released three titles that are at the very least the bare minimum extremely interesting. Million Onion Hotel is a hyper action puzzler, Blackbird an artistic dour shoot 'em up. Their very namesake is based on the feeling of crying when slicing an onion because its director Yoshira Kamara is one to tear up when experiencing something life-changing. The studio's first published game and the topic of this video was only first because of an accident. After a major computer malfunction deleted what was to be their debut project. It's as if this was destined though. Dandy Dungeon is the real life story of Onion Games and a culmination of everything I love about this team. I put a scary amount of time into the iOS version, we're talking hundreds of hours here. So now that the niche gaming gods have answered my prayer and bestowed an enhanced Switch port, I'll be happily exploring the best bits of this wonderfully weird adventure all over again. Dandy Dungeon is a coming of age story. That age just happens to be a later in life 36. Yamada-kun is a man that just can't focus while wearing clothes, spending his nights tap-tapping away, programming his very own video game, to the dismay of his boss at a corporate game company. Skipping this day job to work on his own creation, Yamada is fired. So he has to now give it his all in making the best game ever, the titular Dandy Dungeon featuring Brave Yamada and his now ex-boss Ayana Koji as the Demon Lord. As I alluded to earlier, this concept is a window into the minds of Onion Games staff. They're self-stated to be veteran game developers gone rogue, having founded their company as a free space for passion projects without all the industry pressure or need to make what's right for the market. This game's description, as an indicator of just how funny it is, ponders destiny. Is it pre-programmed or randomly generated? And is love a bug or a feature? As you can guess, financial success is not Yamada's only motivator. Princess Maria is the damsel and love interest in his game, implemented after Yamada meets the love of his life, 18-year-old Maria-chan who just moved in next door. Noting that it's totally not weird or creepy at all, he hopes that each fantastical kiss will someday translate to reality. Your time as a player then is spent debugging or completing levels in the game Yamada's making to impress Maria from his real world apartment. It serves as the hub to see all items, weapons, and loot you virtually collected. The levels themselves are maze-type dungeon crawlers, navigated by a path drawn with your finger or the joystick. All rooms are the same 5x5 five five size, so difficulty stems from enemies and hazards, narrowing possible routes. The goal is to cover every tile of the map, so if there's any mist, or if you take too long deciding which way to go, Yamada's punished by hellfire. Treasure collecting and encounters are determined by the path drawn, with helping spells like healing or destructive magic able to be activated on the way. The maps themselves all have creative and distinct themes like an asparagus ranch or a haunted pirate ship, but the rooms have a degree of random generation, so you can run the same course 10 times and it'll always be switched up. The display is now in widescreen resolution, so I'm really enjoying the larger sprite work and art. The HUD is stylish too. Kazuyuki Kurashima is the art director, who also worked on Super Mario RPG and Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land for character design. Does Yamada start to look familiar now? <laughs> Dandy Dungeon's characters, like the neighbors who will visit often and give some quip about their life, is where the game really shines. To name a few, there's an otaku thief, a pig-loving dominatrix, and a programmer so skilled he channels the power of levitating laptops. Like his beloved Maria, these interactions and other outside influences will motivate Yamada to include them in his game. 
For example, in browsing the internet, he'll come across a local news story about ancient coins from the Tokugawa period being found underground. That, in turn, inspires a sewer level based on ancient Japan, complete with foot soldier skeletons and samurai slimes, or slimerai. Every foe faced is a common RPG trope with a twist, so look forward to toilet mimics and blue-collar working goblins that send money home to their kids. The game is just funny. Cockroaches have a menu option to be censored, Dracula appears as the public domain prince of darkness, and Yamada's daydream about his future with Maria might just be the hardest I've ever laughed at a video game. That's a real Japanese baby. As far as the main storyline goes, it isn't all just about developing Yamada's game. Reality and fantasy begin to mesh when Ayana Koji curses the programming to take it over. The chairman's children, lead employees at Empire Games, now known as the Demon Lord Castle, act as bosses that start to harass Yamada, only joining him as drinking buddies that permanently appear on the title screen after defeat. Claiming victory on this wicked family increases Maria's love gauge, as does seeing Yamada naked apparently, but there's a rival in love that also disrobes for concentration, Bronson, with a knack for slugging our hero in the face. There's even an ongoing mystery with this man in black, who deletes source code from Yamada's computer at night, which was again inspired by Onion Games' computer crashing with no backup. Winning over both these minor antagonists and Maria's heart leads to the climactic showdown, seeing Yamada storming Demon Tower while the world glitches around him. I won't spoil anything at this point, you can see my mobile review for that, but even after Japan recovers from its tear in the Matrix, the story doesn't end. Much more content in the form of special events and an entire sequel, Dandy Dungeon 2, is teased. So if it's anything like the mobile release, that'll be added on to the main game in updates rather than a separate app. When the time comes, I'll review that all too, but focusing on the totality of the first game, how much time will you get out of it? There's a cool mechanic where the main bosses, upon being sent to the bar in shame, will sober up and return to their towers for a rematch. They'll be one level higher, but a little more bandaged and bruised with each round. Komibetsu will ask you not to mistake her for a mummy, and even the chairman, tethered to an IV drip, will start to crack in frustration, begging Yamada to let him win. This dialogue indicates they've hit their level cap, which is good for increasing the chances of exclusive item drops. Each dungeon has a checklist of this collectible loot, granting a gold trophy and rare item when everything's found. The grinding aspect of Dandy Dungeon can admittedly get a little annoying, especially when it's a thunder ore that you need, but there's a chance you'll get any of the other eight instead. Or if the last drop required is a freaking rock. But it's really not that bad when all these special dungeons can be completed in under a minute with the right gear. I would also like to mention that these special dungeons are unlocked one after the next, all sent by Yamada's mom who, at one point, used to run Dandy's official Twitter page, too. I've put in a total of 40 hours so far and have collected essentially everything, but as I've said, there will be more, and regardless, what's here is massive. There's always something to do, whether it's farming happy clovers or trying out armor abilities. These costumes are by far my favorite part of the game, each giving a unique, ridiculous animation and descriptor. Like the college set, being a school uniform and turd hat telling you to hang in there. While only a handful are endgame worthy, there are quite a lot of fun ones to try out. Naked Hero is literally just Yamada wearing a leaf, and the Sailor Collection features a pitcher of beer as a shield. The weapons are just as cool, with the legendary Holy Sake Bottle, for example, channeling the spirit of a hippie. All pieces of equipment that can be upgraded with the treasure you find. There's so much here to keep players invested, but what's new for those like me that have already played on mobile? Let's start with the leaderboard, which I'm currently at the top of, though I'm sure that'll change when the game officially launches. I'll do my best to defend it. 
Each of the main dungeons gives out points for meeting requirements like a fast clear time or completing rooms in a single stroke. This score doesn't accumulate towards a grand total or anything, it's basically a speedrun per dungeon, with your highest score in any one of them being the one that saves. This is more addictive than I thought it would be, and the map layouts always changing will likely make for an interesting competitive scene. The new button controls really do show that the game was rebalanced for Switch 2, because it all feels natural. Paths made by Joy-Cons are a bit slower overall than just using the touchscreen though, so don't go attempting a high score run while the system's docked. Another major difference in this version is the absence of pay to play, which means microtransactions have been reworked entirely. In the past, rice balls, which Yamada reminds us Americans are not donuts, were used to revive and exchange for exclusive weapons within Hungry Questers. This mode is now called Poor Questers, which donates gold instead as a faster way of acquiring spells and upgrade material. Yamada's handy pets are also now purchased with in-game gold, including these rainbow ducks that previously produced unlimited stamina. Weirdly enough, I'm not sure they actually have a gameplay effect in this port, since the energy meter was removed for Switch. Paco, the fourth dimensional dog on the other hand, functions just as he always did, allowing Yamada to access inventory from within dungeons and store extra pickups. These friends are all accessed by the website Mamazon.mom, with the greatest jingle to anything ever, as a testament to the amazing sound design. Dandy's OST utilizes classic jigs for comedy, the main theme, Retrograde Life, is hilarious, you say I'm just a punk and useless junk. And all the light motifs suit the situation. Every track is trumped by Mamazon.mom, of course, but how can you compete with that? The last new addition I want to talk about in this review is leveling up. While each new dungeon run resets Yamada the Brave's stats, that dungeon's completion attributes to leveling up the actual Yamada, expanding his inventory capacity. This progress gain was much, much slower on mobile probably because Hungry Questers also used to give inventory space. So in all of my time playing it, I only managed level 39. On Switch, however, I just cracked 100, which is where it technically caps, requiring an insane amount of XP to reach 101. It's nice having permanent upgrades, and I think the rate of progression hits a nice stride here. To wrap things up, while this game is very, very high up on my likability chart, it's not perfect, and not for everyone. It is a grindy game by nature, so if you don't like that sort of thing, be weary. As great as the writing is too, there's some errors every now and then, and even a select number of missing descriptions where you can see the code. It's funny, normally this would seem like a big oversight, but it weirdly works, seeing as we are debugging Yamada's game. It's his fault, not the devs. I just hope that this doesn't turn people away, because the rest of the game is incredibly polished. Like the bug killer perk from this fly swatter weapon being effective against glitchy or bugged slime, that's really clever. So of course, with all things considered, this is the best version of Dandy Dungeon, and only version available as it was pulled from the Apple Store and Google Play back in December. So if you're even remotely interested, please support these devs. This was easily my favorite mobile game of all time, and now that it's on console, with expectations for the content coming, this is going to be one of the best time for your money experiences out there. There's so much to do, whether it's collecting all sets, or filling out your monster shelf to see what absurd foes will be faced next. If you do decide to download Dandy Dungeon from the eShop because of this video, I would love to know. And if any of you need any help at all with the game, give me your questions. I want to see more people playing this crazy game, so hopefully soon I'll see you all trying to overtake me on the global rankings. See you next time.
らない人に睨まれて心が崩れてく」「焦らず怒らず我慢」